This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Ten games slate coming up in the NBA for tonight, along with three games over in the NHL. We're going to break down both those today with Tom Vecchio picking his brain on player props and traditional market bets across both to get you ready for Wednesday night. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Tom Pleasure to get you back for today. How was Miami for the bachelor party this past weekend? Uh, it was good. No, a little bit of rain wasn't great, but went to Jets Dolphins and the Zach Wilson experience in real life is twice as bad as it is when I'm watching on TV or on red zone. Uh-huh. Uh, Dolphins you don't seem a lot in red zone, so you're actually okay yeah, it's there. It's true. <laughs> Dolphins cover the first half spread, which I got in before I left. Uh, you know, I was happy with that and I'm ready to go today. Uh you got to see touchdown Trevor Simeon in person, so I'm jealous of that. Um, nothing else in that game was significant other than Simeon playing. So, you know, I feel like that makes it by itself a good weekend. It was. And, you know, the was the long touchdown to Waddle was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, overall good stuff. I did not have as much Waddle for DFS as I should have, so I was actually pretty annoyed when that happened. So that's why I'm focusing on the Simeon Only thing, good. disregarding Waddle. You know, we'll just go with that instead. Yeah, uh, I was going to be a, a lot on Waddle uh, since Tyreek was out, but just, in, you know, in Florida, didn't get anything in when I was there. Yeah, you had, you had more important things going on. Right, that right. For sure. We're going to break down both the NBA and NHL for tonight by talking to Tom, getting his read on his favorite bets for both those across a FanDuel Sportsbook. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Of course, you can hear Tom later on breaking down the chart or not the Chargers. Chargers were last Thursday. Rams. Rams and Saints coming up on Thursday night football. Maybe Chris Olave in that game got back to practice on Tuesday, which is good to see. I'll break down that game later on today. For Primetime Tom right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed, our full NFL Week 16 preview with Dr. Ed Vang is coming up tomorrow here in the same feed, no show Friday because of the holidays. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, and you can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and president in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after a seat. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 to visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y in New York. Now, Tom, let's begin things on the NBA side of things. Ten games slate for tonight in the NBA. Any traditional market bets that stand out to you at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight? Yeah, let's start off with the Rockets minus three. The Rockets are a much improved team this year. I'm not going to say they're great or they're amazing, but they are a, a significantly better team compared to where they were over the past few seasons. That's very clear. Uh, also, the fact that the Hawks just aren't good and – the Hawks, I think, get a lot of 
I don't want to say if it's unfair or unnecessary, like hype in the betting lines because they have Trey Young, they have the John T. Murray, like they have the star power, but they're they're still just like a sloppy defensive team and they just don't put it all together on a nightly basis. And I also think that this game is going to be trending towards the under. I don't think the Hawks are going to necessarily get a ton of offense going. So I like the Rockets to cover. They they're again they're improved. I think they're trending upward overall. And again, I think the Hawks are a little bit overvalued uh, when it comes to the market overall, where they have these big name players, but it doesn't actually translate to consistent on on court production on a nightly basis. The plus three for the Hawks is minus one oh eight right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. So um not or sorry, the Rockets minus three is minus one twelve at FanDuel Sportsbook for today's so paying a little bit there at the minus one twelve versus a minus one ten for a traditional side, but sounds like it is worth it at least in Tom's eyes. Any other traditional market bets you're eyeing here, Tom? That would be the Heat and the Orlando Magic, uh under two twenty one and a half. I think this is just a touch too high. Jimmy Butler has already been ruled out for tonight. The uh, the Heat are 28th in the league in offensive pace, and Orlando is sitting at 13. So it's a pace down spot for Orlando. We know that the Heat are a good defensive team. I also don't think the Heat are going to want to get out and run in a super back and forth game when they're missing their best player. So they're going to try and slow things down, try and control the game just a little bit more because the Magic have been super solid this year. The Magic are sitting in like third, second or third or fourth, whatever it is, in the top of the Eastern you know, conference standings, like they're playing super solid ball and they have a lot of, you know, different weapons on offense. And I don't think that the heat are going to want to get out and run with them in this back and forth game when Jimmy's not there. So it's going to be about slowing the game down, you know, controlling things, bam out of bio, good defensive, you know, player in the middle for the, for the heat and should be able to slow Paulo Bancaro and Franz Wagner down just a little bit. So uh, a touch too high on the over under, if it was at two seventeen. To 16 and a half, maybe that's where the over would be in play. But combined with the pace, combined with missing Jimmy Butler, it's all about the under tonight. And you can see the impact of Butler here in the spread, too, as the Heat are plus five in this game against the Magic. Like you said, the Magic have been good this year, especially, you know, relative to what the betting markets have implied for them. Um, but the impact of Butler there at the uh, with the spread being five, but then also Tom liking the under 221 and a half. That is also minus 112. Let's talk some player props, Tom. Where are you seeing value over there tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook? Let's go to the Pacers. Usual spot to always go for some amount of production. <laughs> uh, and that would be Halliburton, Tyrese Halliburton, their best player, over 37.5 points plus assists combined. Seeing a minus 106. The spread's 10.5 in this game, and the over-under is 247, I believe. And as I've said before, the Pacers don't play any defense, so... And I think this 10 and a half number is way too big for who the Pacers are as a team. So I'm expecting Charlotte to cover, which means I expect Halliburton to have to be out there for the entire game. This is not a blowout. I do not expect a blowout factor because if it was a blowout factor, I'd be leaning with the under or staying away because Halliburton wouldn't have to be out there in the fourth quarter. So I do expect the the Hornets to cover. I think this in this line is inflated. This is a fantastic match just because the Charlotte's also terrible on defense. So we're going to see plenty of production. Halliburton has had some slow games as of late, but the shooting and the three-point potential is always there for him. He's routinely pushing to 12, 13, 14 assists. And if him scoring 20 or 25 points is the norm, especially in this type of matchup, he should be able to get there. So when we combine his usage with an easy matchup, but also bad defense because Miles Turner is listed as questionable for the Pacers, their starting center. If he's going to be potentially being out, I expect the Hornets to have an easy path to score and keep this game close. It's all about Halliburton tonight having to carry the load while the team's still being bad on defense. That was points plus assists for Halliburton over 37 and a half minus 104 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Is this sustainable, Tom? The Pacers play, it seems like, in like insane games every yeah. single night. Like, is that going to be the norm the entire year or will there be some regression towards like not having totals pushing 250, 260 every night? I think it's... It's probably a mix of both, if that makes sense. We're like mm. two, 248, 249, like that's not sustainable, but 237 to 242, like that is sustainable because they, they have an awesome offense, especially when they're fully healthy. Sure. You know, Ben Mathurin knocking down shots, Buddy Heald knocking down shots. Like they have the players alongside Halliburton and Miles Turner to like bring the offense. But when they're just so inconsistent on defense and these teams are like every team in the league can knock down threes. So when they get other opponents get the threes going, 
it's going to get into these games. I do expect some regression overall sure. to answer the question directly. Like 247 is too high, but 242 or 240 on a nightly basis should be a little bit easier. So still elevated from the norm, just right. not quite as insane as it's been uh, for the Pacers thus far. Right. So Tom is on the Halliburton prop points plus assists at 37 and a half and minus 104. Any other player props that are catching your eye right now, Tom? Yeah, for the Sacramento Kings, Keegan Murray under 16 and a half points. It's sitting at plus 100 or it was plus 100 just a, a few minutes ago. Last year, Keegan Murray set an NBA record for the most threes by a rookie. And this is shown pretty clearly in, in some of these recent recent games. He's taken a ton of threes. A couple games ago, he hit 12 threes. And then he hit four threes the other night. And his shooting volume is very clear. I think he's just been running on the hot side of variance sure. in some of these recent games. And the majority of his scoring comes from three-pointers. So he's primarily a three-point shooter where you look at some of these game logs, and he's taking half or roughly half of his shots from downtown. So he is facing the Celtics there on the second night of a back-to-back. We have to take that into account. I think the line has been inflated because of these recent shooting performances. And again, he's running on the hot side of variance where if he's not on the hot side of variance and he's still third on the team when it comes to usage behind De'Aaron Fox and Dominic Sabonis, the volume of shots should decrease naturally. And also the variance will be on the other side this time. So under 16 and a half points. Yeah, three-point shots are are great in terms of getting points in a hurry, but they're also super, super volatile. Right. And you can take advantage of volatility a lot of times when betting props. I talked to Dr. Ed Feng a lot about this. Like He loves uh, looking at three-point regression when it comes to betting college basketball stuff, and that's very applicable here to Murray given what – the large chunk of his shots that are that fashion. Now, I will say, as we were talking, uh, it did shift to minus 111 on the under 16 and a half points for Keegan Murray. Big difference Ooh. there. Um, is that still okay to you? It was even money, now minus 111. Confirmation bias that people are on this as well, right. I guess, which is, you know, it's it's me coping uh, with the fact right. that I move. But is that still okay with you? It is. It's, it's probably pushing it, though. Like, okay. minus 115 is probably the only other... The, the lowest I would go, like it's pre, pretty razor thin at this point, just because, you know, the, like I said, the Celtics are on the second half of back to back, and he has been hot, which is just a fact. Sure. So regress, regression is coming, whether it's tonight or Friday or Saturday or Sunday, whatever, it's going to happen. But if he has one or two more games, like this is, I mean, it's possible. So it, it's razor thin right now. Obviously, I prefer the plus one hundred. Right. So this is if you can get the plus one hundred out there, that's take it at that, but not much further. We need alt unders. I know that they're available in some spots, but like right. if we can get some alt unders, you know, that's where you get the real volatility, take advantage of it. But uh, check the Murray number points uh, is 16 and a half minus 111 right now. Pretty thin, uh, according to Tom. So if it does move even more, probably a stay away spot there. We just saw the Halliburton one over 37 and a half uh, points plus assists, which is minus 104. Anything else in the NBA, Tom, before we shift focus and talk some NHL? Uh, the only other spot I'd be relatively interested in would be Kawhi Leonard, only if Paul George is listed out tonight. Now, Paul George is listed as questionable simply due to an illness. Sure. So it's not an injury. It's not an ankle or, or a knee or anything. He's simply listed as questionable due to an illness. So Kawhi could be interesting only if Paul George is out. Okay, so check the status of Paul George. Uh, once you get more clarity on that, check in on Kawhi Leonard and see what you want to do with that as they take on the Dallas Mavericks for tonight. We're going to talk NHL games, Tom, in a bit, but we haven't really gotten to talk more big picture with NHL yet so far this year. So I do want to check in with you. It's a three game slate, so we can kind of uh, luxuriate a bit uh, before we talk about the actual games. Let's talk futures. Anything you've picked up on the first month plus or so in the NHL that you think presents value in the futures market over at FanDuel Sportsbook? So the futures market is, has been, I want to say, I don't want to say thrown into disarray. But with the Oilers being so bad at the beginning of the year, and as we talked about to start the season, McDavid was the odds-on favorite for everything. The Hart, the, Art, the Art Ross, the Rock of Rashar, like all these awards, he was the odds-on favorite. They started off so bad, and so many other players started off so strongly that his numbers have, are super close now with some of his competitors. So I do think, and as I said at the beginning of the year, it's not like he's a lock to win this award. Right. But now we're looking at a spot where there's four or five players that are actually in the running to win some of these awards. And then, you know, if we get down to the point where McDavid has a great season, but the Oilers miss the playoffs, 
how do we take a player? You no, know, can we take a player that has fewer points than McDavid, but their team makes the playoffs and he's like a, a MVP of the team, therefore mm-hmm. is he more important? So some of these markets are extremely tough. The only market that I have interest in would probably be the Vesna, which is for um, goalie of the year. And the Vesna is interesting because all of these other awards are voted on by the PHWA, uh, the Professional Hockey Writers Association, I think is the correct acronym. The Vesna is not. The Vesna is voted on by GMs. Okay. And that is different compared to every other award. And a lot of the writers are obviously very analytically forward where they value different things. GMs value winning. So while we can, while I can look at a goalie and say, listen, this goalie has 28 wins. Mm -hmm. And in order for the team to win, the goalie has a super high workload every single night. He has to do an immense amount every night for the team to win. This other goalie has 35 wins and his stats are better, but he also doesn't have as, as high of a workload where he can have 28 saves. This other goalie needs to have 35. So if we drop down just a touch there uh, for the Vesna, Ilya Sorokin for the New York Islanders is 15 to one. He opened the season, I think it was at six to one and he's dropped down. Now the Islanders went through complete disarray. They were on a seven game losing streak. Now they're playing much better. Arguably Sorokin is a top three, top four goalie in the league. So if the Islanders continue on this path and they make the playoffs, which I think is a very, very important thing. They have to make the playoffs. Sorokin is largely a driving force of that. So if they can make the playoffs, that means he'll be getting enough wins and he'll have the stats to back it up because his workload is extremely high on a nightly basis because the Islanders give up an immense amount of shots that he's routinely coming away with 35, 40 saves. So you have to you have to be willing to say the Islanders make the playoffs in order to want this bet, basically. Sure. So with the Vesna, holistically, does it tend to go towards the top goalie on the top team like we see with some other awards? And are the Islanders in a spot where they can still get to a high enough spot with that regard to make up ground for the struggles they had earlier on this year? Right. So they have, are now in second place in the division, which is obviously a positive sign. Last year, the award went to... Um, uh, Lena Solmark from the Bruins. The Bruins had all these records. They won. And his stats were great just because the defense in front of him was so great. So it's it's obviously a bit of a long shot at 15 to 1, but I'm under the assumption that the Islanders make the playoffs, his stats improve, and we have the GMs valuing wins and like him being the reason that they get there. So with Thatcher Demko be the easy answer now at the odds on favorite, yes, because they're sure. amazing and he also has good stats to back it up. But I want to take a longer shot of something I do think is realistic. Okay. Ilya Sorokin, 15 to one to win the Vesna right now. If you're uh, an Islanders fan in New York, I don't think you can bet that there because I don't believe you can bet MVP markets in, in New York. So uh, take a trip across state lines if you want to get action on that one. Luckily, I'm in Illinois. So no concern for me with Sorokin and the Vesna. Also one other on the uh, yeah. awards, which would be uh, Nathan McKinnon at 10 to one to win the heart. Okay. Uh, he's second in the league in, in points right now. And he's on a 16 game point streak part of the problem with him being valued behind some of these other players uh he's a center so he's and he's always routinely compared to mcdavid and matthews and mcdavid's always better matthews always has more goals than mckinnon but again how are we evaluating these teams when it comes to making the playoffs not making the playoffs he's second in the league in points the abs are 100 can make the playoffs so we have a player that could realistically finish top three in the league in points is a center. He has a high workload. He does all these things and he's 10 to one. Meanwhile, some of these other players may not make the playoffs and they have shorter odds than him. Right. And I will say Jack Hughes is here at, at five to one. And prior to the season starting, starting, I talked about him at 18 to one to win the heart, which I still have that ticket. So, right. And the thesis of it was on point, you know, talking about McDavid and the volatility with the fact that he may have been a bit overvalued with where he was, and that's played out so far. So good movement on the Hughes one at 18 to one, uh, now five to one, and potentially some value McKinnon as well, 10 to one right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's dig in now to this three game slate in the NHL. A couple games on national TV for tonight as well. Let's start things off with the traditional markets, Tom. Anything stand out to you there for tonight? That would be the Jets under Jets Red Wings under six and a half. I believe that's still a minus 104. The Wings are having a good season. I also think that they are overperforming as of late. 
And they're also underperforming in terms of their defense. If all this makes sense, they're overperforming on offense and their defense is underperforming. The Jets are slightly overperforming on offense. They're also missing their best goal scorer. And I think we have to take all this into consideration when we're looking at a team that's due for regression, both offensively and defensively. So when we look to the Red Wings right now over the last two weeks and want to give the most accurate sample size, they're scoring 2.46 goals per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations. And their expected goals for is at 2.1. They're giving up 3.03 goals and they should be only giving up 2.73 goals. So their offense is overperforming. Their defense is underperforming. And then for the Jets, they're overperforming on offense with 3.64 goals per 60 minutes, which is insane. And they're at 2.84 goals when it comes to their expected. So we have these teams that like should be converging in different ways where defense moving down and offense moving down with the defense moving up, like all these sorts of things. And this is where I like to project forward, not only at a team level, but also at an individual basis when players are underperforming in terms of their individual expected goals. Right. So, and, you know, Connor Hellybuck for the Jets, who should be in net tonight, he's, I think he's second on, on the Vesna chart. So he's an elite goaltender by every imaginable statistic. And they've been playing super solid defense. So the Jets defense is fine. It's really their offense that has been overperforming combined with the wings. Not a lot of times you get multiple different regression spots all pinpointing towards the same thing, and you can get three in this matchup uh, with the Jets and Wings. So under six and a half is, like you said, minus 104 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other more traditional markets stand out to you, Tom? Uh, none in traditional markets. Tonight. It's obviously a super small slate. Yeah. Uh, the Islanders, Caps, I wouldn't mind an over there. Sure. Simply playing the number because we don't get five and a half too often. And five and a half is a very low number, especially in today's NHL. So playing the over there is more about the value that the line presents rather yeah. than like some crazy underlying metrics, as I just explained there. That makes sense. Uh, over there is minus 134, but that's more of a lean and an actual right. bet from Tom. Player props. What do you see there? Uh, sticking with the Jets uh, would be Mark Shifley over two and a half shots now. It's not listed on the FanDuel Sportsbook as of now. I or is um, it might have updated since we started. So Shifley is there. Yeah, minus one hundred eight to get uh, three plus shots. Okay, so that that's certainly fine. I saw it minus one twenty, and I thought it was fine. So minus one hundred eight is something that I'll certainly like. Uh, as I mentioned, their top scorer Kyle Connor is out, so their offense is due for regression overall. But Detroit is still allowing a ton of shot attempts. So Shifley on the first forward line is still going to have the opportunity to take the shots because of. Kyle Connor, their leading shot taker, their leading goal scorer being out just because I don't expect a ton of them to go in because, again, the regression should be there positively for Detroit on defense. Just the opportunity and the shot volume overall is going to be there for Shifley, who's still their, their captain, top line center, top power play, all these sorts of things. Yeah, so uh, Shifley, oh, to get three-plus shots at FanDuel Sportsbook, it's in the alternate market. Actually, his traditional one is up as well. It's also yeah. minus one away. Did want to check just to be safe. You know, sometimes you get different numbers. There, yeah, market. there's <laughs> very minor differences sometimes, but it is worth noting. Yeah, it, it's worth checking, uh, but it's minus one away in both spots there. For Shifley, um, this is... You know, we talk a lot about same game parlay stuff like that. This is not one I would tie with the under because obviously they, those don't correlate, but it's individual bets. And like they're not counterthetical. They're just not ones I'd want to tie together when it comes to stuff like this. So Shifley, three plus shots or over two and a half is minus 108 at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Which other player props are you eyeing, Tom? The Kings, uh, that would be Kevin Fiala for the Kings to score a goal at plus 220. Kevin Fiala has a fantastic shot volume over the last 10 games, and he has zero goals. And when you see a player who's playing, uh, you know, on a top six line or a top six forward, he's on the first two forward lines and he's playing on a power play and he's routinely ending with three or four shots on goal, which means he has five, six, seven shot attempts and he's not scoring. And this has been the story for Fiala the entire season. He started off with very few goals. He got hot and then he cooled down again. We're looking at uh, a high volume shot taker who's simply not scoring. And this is just, it happens. It's like players in the MLB who have super high exit velocity, but they've all these flyouts to the warning track. It just, it is what it is. It just happens sometimes. And then you have these players that take, you know, 10 shots over 10 games and they have five goals. And that's right. just obviously also unsustainable. So I'm playing the number at plus 220 for a player that I think is it due for just an immense positive regression and positive goal scoring breakout. Like it's, he's going to have four goals in five games at some point. 
and it, that number is going to be plus 130. Yeah. Uh, Fiala plus 220, as Tom mentioned, for any time goal tonight for the Kings versus the Kraken. Regression is what you want to look for in general. Uh, and it sounds like we're getting that both with the Jets wings under and then also with the Fiala goal scoring prop. Anything else for tonight, Tom, or is that all we got for today? That, uh, I mean, I don't mind uh, Ovechkin uh, goal. It's only plus 125. I would, you would have to maybe look to Ovechkin for maybe some extra shots. Ovechkin hasn't scored in like 15 games or whatever it is. And he's taken yeah. all these shots. Historically, he has been very successful against the Islanders. So if you want to take a shot at maybe a, like a quarter unit sprinkle on Ovechkin first goal, sure. I don't mind that, but that's okay. a very, very minor play. Uh, also bad news. The Jets wings total did go down to, it's still six and a half, but it's now minus one ten as opposed to one Oh four. So somebody's listening to you, Tom, and <laughs> is adjusting markets appropriately. So it's minus one ten as always shop around, but still not as big of a difference as at the Murray prop. So still right. likely some value there at minus one ten. That's all we got for today, Tom. I want to thank you for swinging by as always. Uh, looking forward to tuning into you later on today as you talk about the Rams versus the Saints. Have fun with that. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim dots on You can find FanDuel research on Twitter at FanDuel research. We are back once again tomorrow talking NFL week 16 with Dr. Ed Fang getting his read on his favorite bets at FanDuel Sportsbook for this week. We'll talk to you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel podcast network. 